gave his life for it. And today in the United States, the way people observe Shabbos because there's one, it's Mr. Rosenberg. Man, he had no children, no children. Holocaust survived him and his wife, and he dedicated his life. And I remember when I was a little boy, they used to give out pamphlets. And they used to give prizes that if you go check your Shabbos, you encourage other people, they like, you know, almost like, it was like running off on a mimeograph machine. It was in Princeton, they couldn't afford anything. And they would, in, in the elementary schools, you know, people should take it home for their parents. Different world, but he has the schus. So when he passed away about, about uh, 10 years ago, he left over a, a last will and testament. It was published in, it was in the, uh, all the Jewish newspapers. And he says he gave his life for everybody else for, for Mitzvah Shabbos. And he brought a schus to everybody. He never had a chance to learn himself. You know, because the Holocaust, he was you know, a young man, a teenager, and he has no children. People should learn on his yard site Mishnais. That's what he's asking for people. On his yard site, they should learn Mishnais in memory of his Neshama. That was his request. No, 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 no. He was lifting. He was too simple. He lived in Williamsburg. No. No, I know. It's, 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 it's Rosenberg's like home. Like home. You know, like, like Weiss. You know, every Hungarian that came to Budapest was named with Weiss. Or Schwarz. White or black? Okay. It's all black and white, exactly. Okay, what if we go up? Okay, we're holding another. Let's see where we left off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in Zion. Yeah, we're holding Zion. Second paragraph, first column. Okay. Ernie, we're just talking about the heel. Boy, AKF Tishman. No spurs. Now, if you keep this, if you keep even the little mitzvahs, you know, trample on them, you don't have any pain in the heel. Okay. Pergimel the tiniest. Turn about all of ye odem rach kikone. It should be as soft as a reed, meaning. Or on page Tesvot, 15. You should be rach kikone by ye kosher And you should not be unbending like a cedar. The reed is flexible. A cedar, now try to move a California redwood, you know. Can't move it. Masish were Rebel Ezebrib, Ben Ribshimin, Mimigdal, Geder, Mibes Rabo. It was an incident, Rebel Ezebrib Shimin. He came from a location called Migdal Geder, from, from the house of his Rebbe. He just began the story. He didn't get too far. We are Rochi Val Hamor. He was riding a donkey, Matayal La Svas Hanor. And he was walking on the bank of the river, coming back from studying from his Rebbe. The Somach Simcha Gdola. And he literally was in a state of euphoria. Joy, joy, just came back from his Rebbe learning. Well, he said, Dato Gasa Olov, Minei Shalom Torah Harbe. Yeah. And he was like on a high. And he felt ingratiated, inflated because he learned so much Torah. You know, like a person that is like, feels like he's on top of the world like this. And you're, 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 there's like a certain flippant aspect to the person's behavior. Came a person who was Extremely ugly. Omalo Shol Malecha Rebbe. So he said to him, this person said to Rav Elozim Reb Shimon, Shol Malecha Rebbe. He said, Shol Malecha, Lil Hirzelo. He didn't return. He didn't respond. Shalom. Omalo Reiko. So Rav Elozim Reb Shimon says to this person, this very ugly person, empty one, Kamam Chur Oso Ish. How ugly is this man? Yeah. This is what he says to him. Like he was said it in a way with a lack of sensitivity for this person. Is it possible that all the members of your community are, are as ugly as you are? He says, I'm not sure. 
Elolech v'emod u'mishasuni. He says, if you have a question, if the people in my community are as ugly as I'm, why don't you go speak to the craftsman who, who made me, who made this ugly vessel? What are you asking me? V'emod lo kama m'chur al kli zeshosisa. And you should say to the craftsman, how ugly is this vessel that you created, that you made? If you have an issue about my ugliness, speak to the, to the potter. So he realized he spoke out of turn. Rabbi Lozer Bishim realized what he said was totally unacceptable. So he followed him at Shigia Liro. Until he came to the community of this particular Yotzub Neiro Likroso. He came to his own city. I'm not sure. He, I think I remember to more quickly. The city of, of, the, of the ugly man. Um, they came out. Omrim Sholom Alecha Rebbe, Rebbe, they said, Sholom to you, Rebbe, Rebbe, Mori, Mori. Om Alehem, so this person originally was insulted, says to the, to the community, Lemiatem Korim, Rebbe, Rebbe, who are you calling Rebbe, Rebbe? Omru Lod, Lezeshem Tailach Recho, the one who's walking behind you, strolling, Om Alehem, Im Zer Rebbe, if this man is a Rebbe, in terms of the way he behaved, Al Yidba Kamosu Bishot, there shouldn't be other people like him. Such people shouldn't, should not continue. Omer lo ma. So they said, what happened? He was one of the leading Torah sages of the generation. Omer lem kach This is what he said to me. He, they, he shared with them. Called, you know, he says he's never seen anything as ugly as this. Omer lo af pikein bocholo. Bocholo. The members of the community pleaded with him. He said, forgive him. Even though what he did was unacceptable, forgive him. Shalom godl hu batorah. Because he's a great Torah sage. He says, the only reason I'm willing to be agreeable to forgive him is because you're asking. On one condition, that he doesn't repeat this behavior again. You know, it's he didn't say he shouldn't do it. He shouldn't, he shouldn't, means he shouldn't be, behave this way usually. Normal. No way to ask the community to forgive him. Yeah, but he really didn't say. He says, "Is are, are, are you, are you, is your community as ugly as you are?" That that was a question. You're as ugly as sin. You're as ugly as sin. No, 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 no. They, they, they only asked. He should forgive him. They, they didn't have to forgive him. It's clear from the Gemara. But it's interesting. Is long actually you roga lasus I mean, it's something which you, it's, it's hard to believe when you roga. He should never do it again. So as soon as he said that, as soon as he, 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 he agreed to forgive him, Miyad Nichlas Reb Lozer Shim Medor Shlolem He Oda Brach Konaval Yekosha Keres That a person should be as flexible as a reed and should not be as rigid as a what, as a seed. Because you see, he himself made this because he said, you know, originally he wasn't willing to forgive him. But then, because the community says, from here you see a person has to be what? You have to be, you have to be flexible. You can't be rigid. You can't stand on your on your not on your principles. You can't stand on your whatever it is because take it take it on a personal level. You have to be you have to be forgiving. You have to, you have to let go. Not everybody, everybody. Olam ye odom ye odom. A person should be. Rachke kone al yekoshe. You know people. You know they stand on principle and not willing to forgive because of principle. But people aren't perfect. People are not perfect. I mean that's what he realized. I mean. I mean, he's, the Maral's going to speak about what does this have to do with the whole story over here. I mean, the, whose failing was it? It was his failing. It was Rabbi Lozabek Shimon's failing. Evidently, if he, he, he originally, the man said, Shomal Lechem Nori. He didn't respond to him. Right. Who do you think you are? You're high and mighty. So it was, there was a certain rigidity to him he that he... To no, to Rabbi Lozabek Shimon. To said, I, this ugly man says, Shomal Lechem to, to his great <laughs> rabbi. He wouldn't even e answer him. He didn't acknowledge. He just says, "You empty vessel, you ugly whatever you are." That's what he responded. So that means you feel, you know, he's not worthy even to be responded to, and you almost like you're reprimanding him. Who do you think you are even to acknowledge me? Right? That, that so that's so what he saw. Everything what happened. That means it was he wasn't flexible. 
he was rigid. He was a certain rigidity to him because this had to do with his ego. Rebbe Lozer Rebbe Shimon. So that, it's because that day he had this sort of euphoria. He was like, sometimes a person, mm -hmm. you're like in a state of uh, intoxication. From he, did, it, it, he really, the behavior was, uh, he wasn't in full, his mind and his emotion were fully integrated. To be continued.